March 25th, the Sherburn Fire Department, along with the Ashland Fire Department, watched this house burn completely to the ground. In fact, they're the ones who set the blaze. The fire was the conclusion of two months of extensive training. Douglas Bryan, the owner of the house who lived there for nearly 20 years, donated to the towns. This was a rare opportunity for the men and women of the fire department to experience a real fire under controlled conditions. It's going to be absolutely everything. A lot of people have done a lot of planning here to try and make this as safe as possible for you all. There'll be a lot of support people. For only three people in the building at a time, you'll have 10 or 15 people just watching out for your well-being. It is uh, paramount that you follow all of the things that we went through in our safety briefings and the orientations that we've had. Fortunately, everybody's been through this building already, so you know what it looks like. There will not be any surprises here today. Nobody's going to try and have some surprise part of this element. It's going to be very straightforward. Uh, Three-person attack team to interior attack on a room and contents fire. A team of firefighters is placed inside the house. They will get an eyewitness view of all phases of the fire. One of the things that I want to stress to you, number one, it's OK to be afraid. I'm afraid every time that's healthy. Number two, if you're uncomfortable with something, if you're uncomfortable with the mask, if you're uncomfortable with something that's going on, don't be afraid to sing out. A team of firefighters fully armed with breathing apparatus and hoses waits outside for the drill to begin. We're going to say that this is the recipient going into the pre burning okay? All right. So what I want you to watch is up here, okay? was basic uh, one-room fires. To try to explain, uh, some of the people that are in there have never been into fires before on both departments, both the Ashland Department and the Sherbin Department. So we put those people in self-contained breathing apparatus. They have to go in, find the fire, and do what's called an indirect attack. Uh, they squirt the water in a fog pattern at the ceiling, and what that does, all the heat is at the ceiling, so it cools it down quick, brings all the smoke down to the floor, smothers out the fire. Then they just uh, trickle a little bit of water. The idea is to minimize the water damage in there. He calls, the nozzle man calls for ventilation. They open the windows. 
Then you saw them sticking the hose through the window and squirting. And the idea, if they put the hose in a fog pattern, is to pull, uh, make pressure and pull all the smoke out from within the building. Do you see the difference when he pulled that nozzle back? Push it out to a fog. And what you're doing when you put it out to the fog and you're flowing water is it creates a draft behind you. It wants to follow the water. So put it to that fog. That's about a 30 degree fog pattern. Extend the nozzle out, let it charge, and then pull it back. And what will happen is you pull it back to the point that that draft has got that window completely sealed. Not the water, but the draft. And it pulls the smoke choom, right out with you. And it, it's called power venting. Works out real well. Now, what is involved in trying to get all this together and, and making it go smoothly? Oh, there's an awful lot. You have to get DEP approval. You have to remove any asbestos from any pipes that are in the building, uh, make sure that the building doesn't have any hazardous materials in it, remove the heating system. Uh, in some cases, they make, make you remove the uh, roof, uh, roof shingles. In this case, they didn't, uh, apparently because it's burning season now and, and uh, the smoke could be carried away and won't affect the environment at all. Uh, you have to get all kinds of permission like that. Then there's a lot of coordination and planning that goes into doing it. We want to make sure that everything is done safely, uh, nobody gets hurt. How often do you get the uh, opportunity to burn down a, a real structure? It doesn't happen very often. Uh, it's been uh, very good of Sherbin to invite our fire department over so we can have cooperative maneuvers. Uh, it helps us when we have a mutual aid uh, situation where there really is fire, the people are familiar with each other, and we make sure that our equipment is compatible. How do you think the teams are, are doing so far with this procedure? Well, so far things have gone wrong, but that's the idea of doing it during training. Uh, uh, overall, they've been very good, uh, and, and we expected to have some mistakes made, and it's really worked out well. So is this what you consider the best kind of training overall that they can ever get? Absolutely. Hands-on training, uh, when if there's a problem, you can withdraw and then have another crew. You always have that stuff ready for a backup. Or if there's a live fire situation, you don't usually have that initially. You have to wait and build up to that point when you have manpower and equipment there. Everything's laid out right now, and we're ready for that. What are the plans for the rest of the day? What we're going to do is we're going to do two hose evolutions, have a fire on the first floor, uh, one hose crew go in and extinguish that fire, another hose crew go into the second floor and extinguish the fire there, uh, maybe do some search and rescue while they're doing that. When they light the fire, you, I think that you had a camera inside there. The fire, you see that the heat and smoke go to the top of the ceiling. Uh, in a regular building fire, uh, when it, it's kind of closed up, the windows are closed and stuff, it can get up to 1,200, 1,500 degrees up at the ceiling level. And that's why when I said you put the fog pattern on the hose, you squirt it toward the ceiling, it turns the steam, cools that down, and everything drops down. Uh, but it does get quite hot up there. Dave Lang, a 20-year veteran of the fire department, knows just what it's like to enter a burning building. If, it, if we have a f uh, fully involved smoke room, all we would basically do is um, follow the smoke until we can't go any farther. And then if we're in the room where the fire is, we'll see an orange glow where the seat of the fire is, and we'll try attacking it at that point. By mid-afternoon, firefighters had completed over four hours of grueling practice drill. After two months of extensive training, firefighters prepared to light the house on fire one last time. Only this time, they would not try to extinguish the flames.